This is episode 10 of the History of Podcast. I'm Robert. And I'm Emma. And today we will be talking about the history of socks. Those lovely knitted things that keep your feet warm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, before we get started, let me just plug the YouTube channel and our new Instagram. Our YouTube channel is same name. It's called The History Of. And our Instagram is called the history of podcast and you should totally check us out yeah just just launched uh the instagram it's been pretty popular so looking good um before we get into the episode we have the egg carton count today's egg carton count is 14 i'm sure you can hear that extra egg carton just mm-hmm. sounds sounds so much so much better from that one. Oh you yeah hear totally all righty y'all so Socks may seem like a random item to discuss, I mean, honestly, but however, what would this world be without socks? It would be a sockless world. Yes, yes it would. It would be a world full of cold and callous little piggies. And to me, that sounds like quite an unpleasant world to live in. The exact origin of the invention of socks is hazy. Many people believe that the most basic form of socks came to be in the Stone Age, when people wrapped leather around their feet. That really walks the line between socks and shoes, though. That's kind of like moccasins, I guess. They've evolved through throughout time, Yeah, thankfully. Uh, with the rise of various civilizations came the variations of the sock we know and love today. With more written records coming on the scene, we have evidence of a sock-like item existing in ancient Greece. The Greek scholar Hesoid wrote a poem in the 8th century BC titled Works and Days, which talks about not it's not about it but it does mention a sock-like object made of animal hair that was worn between the shoe and foot and uh, according to farmer farmers uh, the romans would wrap their feet in strips of fabric or leather uh, however in the second century a.d socks called udones is it udones i think so udones or udones U- udones you udones sounds funnier Socks called udones uh, emerged. These udones were made uh, in two primary methods. Uh, So the first was sewing socks together in a patchwork-like method. Um, And the other is uh, by crafting socks in a method similar to crochet called a spring work method. No, I didn't mispronounce spring. It's spring, S-P-R-A-N-G, work method. Um, And uh, according to RomanArmy.net, I'm just quoting this uh, because this, this description is... This is extremely hard to, hard to describe without mm-hmm. just like taking a direct quote. So, uh, the possible socks shown on the can can calor can cal help me with this. I one. think it might be the can caloria can caloria uh, reliefs lack toes and heels and could have been made from a cloth or a spraying work tube uh, with a horizontal slit halfway down. So imagine this. Uh, like look at your sock and imagine this. So. Uh, from a cloth or a uh, spring work tube with a horizontal slit halfway down, which would open around the heel when the sock was put on. That is some good imagery right there. Even the Egyptians had socks, guys. One pair of knitted Egyptian socks that has been discovered was fashioned sometime between the 3rd and 6th centuries AD. The socks were actually split in the middle, or more like split for the toe, and were worn under sandals. I'm getting Socko vibes. It was... The Egyptians were ahead of the Socko fad. Like, I don't know if they're quite Sockos. They're sandals and socks. So, I don't know what you would call that. They were just the people who did it before it was cool, you know? Wave. It was cool then. And then, like, things things come back in waves. We're, we're like, mocking the Egyptians now. That's a whole other podcast for sure. Oh, yeah. Now, you may think of... Uh, Hmm. How do I say this? When many people binge s- several seasons of The Office or Stranger Things or whatever show you binge, um, many people, primarily women, wear leggings. We just want to be comfortable. That's all it is, man. That's all it is. Comfortable clothes, not for guys. However, <laughs> did you know that the term leggings uh, dates back to medieval times? At first, uh, leggings were made of fabric or leather and uh, covered the legs as well as the feet. These evolved into more form-fitting, tight-fitting 
tall socks that men wore under breeches. As the uh, breeches became shorter and shorter, uh, the socks became taller and taller. It really turned into a weird look. Mm -hmm. And eventually, uh, the breeches merged with these tall socks that were really more hose and became tights. Because of the form-fitting nature of the tights, men became more self-conscious of their calves and wanted to have the best-looking calves possible. That's a that's an odd flex right there. And that's really flex in the original term. Like when men would flex their calves, that's like the first the first flex. I and don't want to think about that. That was the real flex. Oh, all right. Like many things, socks were a mark of prestige in medieval Europe. Peasants knitted their socks at home, while the wealthy donned silk socks with a seam running down the back. A little over 400 years ago, an unlikely English individual crafted an invention that would turn the sock-making industry on its head. A clergyman by the name of William Lee found himself in a predicament. He was courting a woman who prioritized knitting over him. Like any reasonable person would, Lee responded to this debacle with innovation. In 1689, he created the knitting machine. Lee brought this invention to the Queen, Elizabeth I, uh, for a patent, but she refused to give him one. After some fine-tuning, uh, Lee brought the machine, uh, the knitting machine back to Queen Elizabeth uh, to gain a patent for the invention. Uh, however, she still refused, uh, and she was worried that the release of the knitting machine would put the knitters uh, of her country out of work uh, and harming the people and economy. In response, Lee turned to France's King Henry IV, who let Lee operate his knitting machines there. To the dismay of English knitters, Lee's brother brought the machines to England after Lee died. The industrialization of sock making was uh, taken to the next level in 1816, when English engineer, uh, originally from France, Sir Mark Isambard Brunel, Mark, Sir Mark Isam, Isambard Brunel, it's a mm -hmm. long name, uh, created a machine that could knit circularly. It was not well loved by the mass population um, for about another 40 to 50 years, um, but by 1878, Henry Griswold uh, tweaked the machine so it could uh, add ribbing, uh, rib knitting uh, cuffs uh, and welts to socks. In the early 20th century, a new material for socks opened up a new world for socks, nylon. Uh, the the innovation of nylon was so significant uh, because it was first it was the first fully man-made uh, material ever created um, and before then scientists uh, relied on natural fibers to create products um, so before then we were really unable to uh, create our, our own material completely from scratch if you will the creation of nylon opened a new door of possibilities for scientists because it showed that scientists did not have to be fully dependent upon nature to provide the building blocks for materials. These are uh, There are multiple uses for the, the material nylon, from parachutes to rope, as you may know. Um, but because of the versatility of nylon, uh, there, were, there were wonders about how the material should be first released into the market. Um, they came to, the, the I guess, the inventors, the developers of nylon... Well, maybe not the developers, but the, the people in charge of the finances came to the conclusion of making nylon stockings uh, as a more superior product to silk stockings. Not only were nylon stockings less likely to run, um, but the replacement of silk with nylon would help the uh, struggling United States economy find some find some footing. Oh, I know. That was, I'm so funny. You are so funny. At the time, over 65% of the silk uh, that came into the U.S. was from Japan and being used for stocking. So this really disrupted the market. Oh, yeah. It definitely turned the tables. The first pair of nylon stockings was created in 1937. Nylon stockings were introduced to the public at the World's Fair in 1939. Consumers could finally get their hands on these revolutionary stockings on May 15, 1940. And... These people were thrilled. Okay, Robert, guess how long it took for 4 million pairs of nylon stockings to be sold. So this was right after the World's Fair? I believe it was once they were released on May 15th. This is like the second popular item that came out of the World's Fair that we've discussed in this podcast. I mean... The first was ice cream cones. So I'm, I'm guessing how long it took 4 million pairs to, to sell out. I think it was to be sold, maybe not directly on, like around May 15th, but just in general. Okay. Two weeks. No, man. It was shorter. Four days. 
It, they sold out in four days. Four days. Y'all. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Nylon stockings were an absolute hit across America. However, the United States entrance into World War II came not long after the introduction of nylon stockings to Americans, causing the amazing material to be used for more necessary purposes like parachutes and ropes on the front lines. I mean, I get that. Yeah. Uh, however, this did not stop the, uh, the women at home from demanding nylon stockings. There soon emerged... Get this, a black market for nylon stockings. One under-the-radar dealing of a shipment of nylon sold for $100,000. And this is in World War II, so think about that in today's money. That's that's insane. That's a, yeah, I know. I wonder how much they sold them for, like, per, a piece? per piece. Yeah. I don't know. Some women, however, tended to stay on the more legal side. You know, think about that, kids. Stay on the more legal side by staying out of the black market. Instead, they painted the back of their legs to make it appear as if there there were seams running down their legs, tricking onlookers into thinking that they were wearing nylon stockings. Yeah, just just don't don't look too close. <laughs> yeah, I suppose not. But wait, y'all, there's more. Once World War II had come to a close, nylon stockings were back on the legal market again, thank goodness, with many excited women ready to buy them. However, customers got so excited about their nylon stockings that there were, quote, nylon riots. Riots. Riots, y'all. Riots. On one occasion in Pittsburgh, 40,000 customers lined up to buy stockings from a store that only had 13,000 nylons, resulting in, as a Pittsburgh newspaper phrased, a good old-fashioned hair-pulling, face-scratching fight broke out in the line. The popularity of nylon stockings has uh, decreased over the years, um, but socks are still a vital part of the, the modern wardrobe. Maybe mm-hmm. not just stock, maybe not just uh, nylon. Um, we even have the Boston Red Sox, uh, the Chicago White Sox. Uh, the uh, you know we have Fox and Sox. We have uh, yeah we have, we have all sorts of stuff like yeah. modeled after socks. Yeah, it's definitely found its way into society. Now, just a few quick side notes. So. I was doing some research and I found some things that were interesting that maybe totally didn't fit in or they were kind of debatable. So let me just share those with you real quick. So one thing I found was a dissertation titled The Utilization of Sock Puppets in Cyber Intelligence Operation. I'm sorry, what? The Utilization of Sock Puppets in Cyber Intelligence Operation. I was, I was, I flipped out. I was like, how is this possible? Well, apparently it's just... A sock puppet is a term for fake online personas, so it's just another term, but I was quite thrown off. Also, I stumbled upon something known as the Sock Police. Apparently, in 1566, they stood at the gates of London and made sure your socks were up to standard. Now, I tried to find a primary source document that referenced this, but I couldn't find one, so I mean, take this with a grain of salt. I also stumbled upon the Bureau of Missing Socks, and it was a bureau supposedly created during the Civil War to monitor missing socks, I guess? You know, I was intrigued when I first saw this, but did a little more research, and I think it's an internet myth, so I mean, take it with a grain of salt, but I thought it was pretty interesting when I found it. Hmm. Well, take a moment and look down at your feet. Are there socks there? If not, I'll give you a pass. But at the time of this recording, it's summer. And sock clad or not, what would your life be without socks? I imagine it would be much colder, stinkier, and have less room to express your uniqueness. Well, I hope this episode knocked your socks off. Another, wow, (laughs) wow, you're going to hit them with that. Oh, yes. Well, if you have any questions, comments, or topics you'd like to see in the future, uh, please contact us at thehistoryof365 at gmail.com. Also, if you have any episode ideas, you know, what we should make an episode on. Anything you'd like to see. Feel free to email us that suggestion and we'll be happy to look into it. Have a blessed day. And you've got to promise me something. Never stop learning.